How many of you remember this from way back when? a lot of us did back in 58 and 59 and again in 69 to 71 when Tom Leahy used to introduce the old nightmare show only we didn't appreciate what a new thing we were watching Vampira had been a costumed hostess all by herself in LA starting in 54 and Roland had become successful in Philadelphia and then famous as Zachary in New York hosting and co-writing and had an off-screen co-star but Wichita's Tom Leahy was the first one who did it all, hosting and writing original scripts unrelated to the evening's movies, designing and painting the set, and creating the makeup design for both himself and his on-screen co-star Rodney, all without the benefit of ever having seen another host. John Froome. John Froome came up with it. Uh, they had bought the old shock package, which came out at that time. And uh, John came to me and asked did I want to do it, because he knew I was kind of way out at that time anyway. A fired sort of cat and um, asked me if I wanted to do it. I said, sure, I'd be glad to do it. And then uh, we talked it and kicked it around and thought about a Laurel and Hardy concept. You know, I have a foil, a goony guy. And uh, Lee Parsons was a stagehand at Cake at that time. And uh, John thought of the name Rodney. And um, so we, uh, he asked Lee. Lee was really excited about doing it. So, um, we had a pretty good meld there, you know, and uh, it went real well for about two and a half years. When was it? <laughs> I'd say 1954, um, 55 maybe. I, I don't know, really, honestly. It was way back there, 30 years ago at least. Well, yeah, we um, parodied uh, modern society as much as anything, you know, uh, much like the Adams family in that uh, uh, the abnormal was the normal, you know, that sort of thing. But no, we didn't do anything about the films. The makeup, uh... the makeup and costumes I designed. Uh, John, the original set was designed by John and, uh, you know, the stage crew there that uh, built the thing. But I did the makeup and um, conceived of the makeup. Rodney took about 30 minutes, and mine about 32. The original cake nightmare, uh, Bill Sykes, who is now program director at KSN, uh, he and I were together on the thing. Really, more or less, you know, we kicked it around is what we did. But that was uh, from the old shock package. They had that in the, on the, uh, the brochure that came, you know. And so we just had uh, f uh, shot it, made photographs of it, and then burned it. <laughs> Primitive, huh? You know, now you wouldn't do it this way. I think they sprayed lighter fluid on the back of the picture, lit it, and lit moved it. away from it, yeah. Just about one dry run is what we'd do. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, no videotape. You know, so we, uh, it had to, we had to, whatever we did, that was it, and it went out. And uh, just about one dry run, but uh, we did very well, because we had a lot of uh, visual effects that uh, carried out. We didn't have chroma key in those days. So if you were going to, um, I know one instance we had um, where I had uh, little nephew Claude come to visit, and uh, little nephew Claude was supposed to be about seven or eight years old, and little nephew Claude was about 15 feet tall. He was a giant, Do you, I don't know if you recall it. So what we had to do, keep little nephew Claude on one side of the set, but we miniaturized that whole section of the set, and you know, and uh, in proportion, and then blacked that part of the screen out, supered that in there where he played while they, we played in our section over here, in order to get the giantism. We got letters all the time, fan letters and things like that, but, uh, and we had some pictures done, you know, handouts. And I answer the letter and usually enclose a picture, but not, not as such. You gotta understand, it was kind of like a throwaway thing. Uh, it filled a void on the programming from 10.30 to midnight or midnight to 1.30 or whatever they wanted to do. It was never what I call a premier type presentation of that station because it was, that was about the beginning of um, the news bores, you know, and uh, that's where all their interest was, was trying to get number one news here in the market. And No, we had seen none because it was just getting off the ground. Uh, they tailored it around that shock package. I, I, that played all over the United States. So I think it was about the same time. I, they would almost be together, I would think. I think it was going to Philadelphia or something that was that doing this story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, oh, no, I never seen I don't know of any except the gal in in um, L.A., you know, Elvira. Elvira.
Well, can she come from Wichita, lived here one time or something like that? And that's, uh, she does it for a campy thing. You know, it's, it's kind of cute, what I've seen of it. We had two firecracker stands, Lee and I did, and we got in that makeup every night and raced from one stand to the other to make personal appearances. But the worst personal appearance I ever had was some skating rink. We went to a skating rink down south here someplace, and they wanted us on skates. Well, me on skates is next to a disaster. <laughs> oh, it was awful. And, you know, it was just terrible. Thank God it was only for an hour. Now we had my uh, girlfriend, my intended, uh, Cynthia. We said nothing but blood and fell over in our mashed potatoes when we constantly when we had a banquet. We had baby dog Glutkin, who was. We had Agnes, the abominable showgirl. Uh, we had. Uh, well, come to the Internal Revenue Man. Infernal Residue Man was um, uh, Lamont D. Treadwell, who we disposed of nicely. Okay, well, John Froome thought of the uh, Laurel and Hardy concept of the thing. And of course, we had to put it in within the genre that we were. So um, uh, the foil, my foil, had to be grotesque looking. And uh, the Hardy character with me, who was always thought he was right, was always wrong, inevitably. And uh, also the other guy, it was the poor, simple thing, always came out ahead in the long run. And that's the premise we had, but then we put it within the framework of the horror type film. The Wolfman, I think, Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, the most horrible miscasting in the world. You know, really, honestly, here's Claude Rains, this sophisticated Englishman who's supposed to be his father, talking about Lawrence Talbot, you know. And here's this clutch, you know, hide that. Man, it was, it was ridiculous. And we look back on it now, Jeff, the makeup of Matt Grady looked like a, a oak cedar mop with eyes, you know. I mean, that was about as much like a wolf when you compare it to, oh, the howling and what was the other one, uh, the real great, oh, werewolf, in, American werewolf in London. Yeah, gosh, not even the same, same category, is it? Well, at that time, Bill Sykes had moved over as program director for KSM. And uh, he and I, well, we've been friends for a long time. So we were kicking around and said, well, Bill, why don't we do, hey, let's do Nightmare. We had a film package that we were running on Saturday nights. No Saturday Night Live, of course. And there were some films in it, you know, that we could lift on. So he thought it'd be a kick. So it just so happened we had a cameraman uh, by the name of Jim Herring who wanted to act and uh, did a tremendous job, as you well know, just really great as Rodney. And they were about the same proportion as uh, Lee was, you know, big man, muscular guy. And uh, so we kicked it off. Wild man? I don't know, but he was a wild man. Uh, could be me. Uh, what you saw is what you get said with Jim, because he was a wild guy. Real, a uh, nice guy. Real wild, though, crazy, crazy guy.